So in the heart of putting spirit first and setting the tone for this morning's service, I would love to welcome out one of our newest practitioners, Michelle DeGarris. She is going to be holding the light for us this morning. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so many exciting announcements, and so many things to show you and share with you and make sure I don't forget about. I couldn't even hold them all. Okay, so as you all know, Jean Houston is coming here to Seaside. Oh my goodness, yes, here to Seaside. This is an amazing, spectacular opportunity to see this incredible woman. If you have never seen her, you don't even know what you're missing and you don't want to miss out. And I know if you've seen her before, you've already gotten your tickets because she is so incredible. And to show us a little bit more tangible experience, I think Marv has a video for us. message the world needs now. Jean Houston, futurist, sage, global visionary, author, philosopher, advisor to world leaders, U.S. presidents, and the U.N. She was a dynamic and heart-opening, inspiring. What, what was amazing to me is the way she articulates her words. They're so expressive. They, they touch the depth of our souls, of our hearts, of our minds. Um, it's, uh, my body was tingling all over at one point. Touched my soul in a profound and wonderful way. I feel um, alive and awakened and very blessed to have had this opportunity and grateful uh, for teachers like Jean. It felt like it was in the, uh, the presence of uh, true genius on the planet. I think we're very fortunate to have her. I love her, her sense of humor, her tapestry of language, and also the applicable practices that she did with us tonight. I had a total breakthrough doing that with her. And I'm, I was like thinking about running home halfway through because I was so inspired that I want to write. And it just awakened and enlivened something in me. And I feel like I'm still getting a, um, like a major healing. I was really captivated. I, she's obviously a spiritual master and her ability to weave in humor and to touch our hearts, to touch our souls, really took us on a deep dive. Jean Houston, Friday, November 1st, seven o'clock at Seaside Center for Spiritual Living. Register online at seasidecenter.org slash Jean. Yes, 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 and tickets are available. Yes, big thanks to Steve Dahl for putting that together. Oh my goodness, what an incredible video. Tickets are available in the family room. Okay, if you are new or you've been coming a long time, but you are finally ready to become a member and declare Seaside as your home, we are having new member class today after Sunday, and next Sunday is a very special new member Sunday celebration and lunch event. Very exciting. This week, everything's, I guess today's word is exciting. I think last time it was magnificent. Today it's exciting. Have you guys seen this? Do you have it? Do you have it with you? No? 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 Okay. Well, you should. They're for sale in the bookstore. This is Oprah's newest, greatest book, and this is what we are doing Sacred Circles on right now. There you go. A few of you have it. Sacred Circles have started this week, but it is not too late to sign up. They are a powerful way to connect with fellow community members to take this teaching a little bit deeper and really take it home to you personally, how it's working in your life and what dreams and schemes and 
all kinds of fun things you want to bring forward. So check out the book and Sacred Circle signups are in the family room. Today, you might have noticed a huge moving truck in the parking lot. We are collecting for what's called Humble Designs, which is a powerful organization that helps people transition from homelessness into homes and helping them decorate their homes and provide all of these wonderful things for them. So we are collecting gently used and new household items in the parking lot. We're doing it with what's called Boulder Together. It's happening all over San Diego with other centers for spiritual living. Really, really amazing work that they're doing. Also out front, there is a harvest table for the harvest, Harmony Harvest. We are doing a wonderful fundraiser for our youth and family. So if you have bounty to share, please bring it. Or if you would love to. world that you would love to share, you can drop those off in that clear box on the pedestal by the sound stage, sound booth. And then also, this is actually a real postcard, you guys. They designed it with a special U.S. legal measuring. It's really a thing. It's kind of a big deal. But it's real. You can put a stamp on it and send a note like you're really traveling. Send it to yourself or send it to someone you love. Share the good, not just with us, but with those you love as well. So, without further ado, please stand, greet your neighbor, and let's get this started.
Rebecca, oh my. <laughs> Woo. So, what you doing this afternoon? I'm playing at Thornton Winery this uh, this afternoon, opening for Jeffrey Osborne. Oh, We're excited. So, yeah. I think there might be a couple tickets left if you want to join us. Oh, that'd be fun. I, I know Bill's got a whole crew coming yeah, from Seaside. Awesome. Man, Jeffrey's so lucky he's got you playing with him. Or he, you know, oh, just good. Thank, oh, you, thank so you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, good morning, Seaside. Woo, what a joy it is to be with you on this whirlwind tour. That passport, my goodness, you get the stamp today for Italy? That's good. Well, you get to take that seaside energy out there to the world for sure. You know, Seaside is a thriving spiritual community inspiring people uh, to live their divinity. It is a place where we care and we practice kindness and no judgment and just embrace individuals where we are in our spiritual path and that consciousness we take to the world. And today we're taking it over to Italy. We have got another wonderful display that I'm standing in front of, but Ginny Mills and Dennis were here this morning setting it up. The, the hat of the Pope, the colors of Italy, for sure, His Holiness the book right here. We've got on our big globe, Italy, which is right there. It's the boot. We got pictures from the Sistine Chapel. We've got books in Rome. Oh, we got a package from the Pope himself, all in Italian. I don't have a clear what it's saying. But the thing with Italy, it is about the passion. We all did uh, Eat, Pray, and Love uh, this summer with Julia Roberts, and she talked about the food. You know, it's Italian. You know, it makes sense, right? Italy, Italian food. And, and it's the language. It is the passion. It is the love. It is the color. It is the culture. It is the art. It is the flair. And this is where we're going today, because I got to tell you, I believe the creative expression of spirit comes through that artistic uh, uh, pulse so beautifully. And so today, we're going to go here some of the wisdom from Pope Francis himself, but I'll tell you what, we have got that wisdom flowing right here through a wonderful practitioner, and this is Annie Prescott. Annie. Thank you, Dr. Christian. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming here and being with us in this beautiful spirit of love. Now it's time for us to deepen our experience with spirit and gather together in spirit, and I'd like everybody to take a deep breath in, blow it out. Deep breath in, blow it out, let go of everything it took to get you here today. Ground yourself in the moment, right here, right now, and join me in the silence. As each one here is harmonized to that loving divine essence and power that is in, around, above, and through absolutely everything, as every religion knows and as science has discovered that there is a God particle in absolutely everything, that everything is God expressing. Absolutely everything is a manifestation of God and it is that love is the beginning and all the God qualities follow. First there was love, then light. Let there be light, then life, then beauty, abundance, harmony, peace, and joy.
Thank you, Rebecca, for that beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you, Annie, for your prayer and for holding the stillness. Thank you, Max, for the melody. I love this time of service where we go through those steps together and bring ourselves fully to this moment with each other. today is your first Sunday with us, I want to extend an extra special welcome. Welcome to each of you. Whoever you are and wherever you're from, please know that you are welcome here. We're honored to share this day with you. We feel so blessed that you chose to spend your Sunday morning here with each of us. And in preparation for those of you who are new, we, we made these beautiful packets are you they're out in the family room with all kinds of other goodies inside these welcome packets we have coupons and brochures and magazine and CD and you name it all kinds of fun stuff to get you excited to get you informed and to show you in so many ways how much we are here for you so pick one up and if you see anyone wearing a shawl that looks like this these are our practitioners they are our prayer warriors. They have been through years of training to know and hold the truth of each of us for themselves and for our community at large. And if there's anything special on your heart today, I hope that you'll fill out a prayer request form. You can find them in the back in our dolphin corner or in the west entrance hallway. Our practitioners receive these and they pray on them every single day, all week long. And oh, the good that comes from these prayers is just so profound. Prayer is one of the many things that we do so well here at Seaside. Another fabulous thing that we offer is a plethora of magnificent classes. Some of you may have heard of this class called Foundations. You may have even taken it once or more than once, like some of us who just find it so good we can't get enough. But so much good comes from all of these wonderful things. So at this time, I would love to invite one of our fellow congregants to share a story of the good that he is receiving from the wonderful things happening here at Seaside. Terry, everybody, please, a warm welcome. Good morning, Seaside. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. Well, Kristen asked me to give an actual example of manifesting a positive, and, and basically, um, I have a business in the area of real estate development where I work with different hospitals and, and commercial, industrial, and I kind of get them through the governmental process. And, and last year, I came back uh, from Croatia, and I just finished a couple of big projects, and I was seeing things were a little bit uh, not going as much as I wanted, and I came into foundations. And we went into that, that area of manifestation where we, you know, where in my past, I would, if I started worrying about, a, a, about business or having enough work in my consulting practice, you know, I start thinking, you know, the negative and then maybe get a little worse and think negative and a little bit worse. But, but Christian in the foundation class said, well, let's think about the positive and, you know, and just in your mind, place the positive of all the business that you want to have. So I did that. And I started getting business like crazy right after that. And I got all sorts of business. So I liked foundations so much, I took it a second time in January. OK? So, so anyway, so I come back and I said, well, you know, that works so well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the manifesting part. I'm going to wish for more business than I can handle. Yeah. Not a smart move. <laughs> Anyway, so I went, I go, okay, I'm, just, I'm imagining all this business is coming at me, and it did. I started working like seven days a week. It was crazy. I, go, I remember when I said to, you know, to Chrissy, he goes, well, maybe you shouldn't have done that exactly, you know. But it was amazing. I had the best year I ever had, you know, financially in my business because of that manifestation. So, you know, just uh, my girlfriend and I, we just went to uh, Greece, came back a, a, a few weeks ago. And... Um, and I literally, we just finished some projects, and, you know, same thing sort of happened. You know, wait two weeks. And so I got, I'm in now prac one, and so we're going through manifestation again. I'm thinking, okay, and, and, and it's been amazing. I've been just positively thinking about this new business, and I've been getting calls, several, call, several calls a week of new business. As a matter of fact, just uh, last Friday, I was with two Chinese investors wanting to do a 500,000-square-foot building. So it's amazing, you know, if, if you put that into practice for a person that's been thinking the other way my entire life, and how that if you put that into practice, 
practice it, great things can happen. So anyway, you're going to have a great uh, message here today by Christian, a great chat with all of you. Thank you, Terry. All right. Yeah. That's a good way to get the morning started, huh? Good morning, Seaside. It is my honor to introduce our guest artist today, and he came all the way down this morning from Compton, Los Angeles, as he's in the middle of doing a book tour, and uh, he squeezed in some time for us this morning, for which we are eternally grateful. And uh, Keith Leon S. is a multiple international best-selling author, co-owner of a successful book publishing company, and he's an international speaker who's spoken at events that included Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, Barbara DeAngelis, John Gray, Brian Tracy, and Marianne Williamson. He's appeared on many TV and radio shows, and his work has been covered by Inc. Ma Inc. Magazine and the Huffington Post, just to name a few. Keith is a longtime member of Agape, a spiritual practitioner, an Agape International Choir member, and a soloist who has made music with Stevie Wonder, Ben Vereen, Nancy Will Wilson, Carl Anderson, Gloria Loring, Keb Moe, and the Wood Brothers. And uh, the two songs that he's gonna do for us this, uh, this morning, he also has on the CDs, uh, CDs that he has with him today. So he's currently on an international tour with his book, which is called Walking With My Angels. Please help me welcome Keith Leon S. Good morning, Seaside. This song is a finger snapper, a toe tapper, and a booty shaker. So feel free to get up and shake your booty. This song is called It's a God Thing. Thank you. 
That is Keith. Oh, it's, it's a God thing, man. Get that energy going. Woo. It's like we're at a rock bass for the Pope. I can just imagine his holiness dancing in his robes and his hat going back and forth. It was my visual. <laughs> now you have it also. Anyway, um, here we are. We are on our uh, way to Italy. I keep my arms flailing and not have to be uh, uh, guilty about that today. And... Uh, but, but the thing about the Pope and what we're doing here, for those that may be arriving on this journey for the first time, is we're taking a look at some of the current spiritual leaders of this planet. And so the Pope, he seems to be up there on that list in terms of his influence. And, um, but it's an amazing uh, expression that this guy, for me, represents, and it's one of possibility. I mean, here is a man who, at the age of 76, at the papal uh, concave, was elected to become Pope. And what is remarkable about this is that he was a progressive in the sense of he is bringing forth new ideas. He is bringing forth an openness. He is bringing uh, these concepts that, have, that are a bit outside what has been the norm. I mean, they're not like way outside, but you know, it, it's a little bit of a stretch uh, for, uh, for those in, in the Catholic world. But what was amazing is he tapped a consciousness that resonated within their heart. He was elected the first um, a Jesuit to become Pope. He is the first Pope that has been elected from the Americas. He is the first Pope to be elected from South America, uh, coming from Buenos Aires and Argentina. And uh, he, he's talking and he's putting down consumerism. He's saying, hey, we got to check out this climate change kind of thing. He says, you know, maybe we all are, you know, kind of, you know, equal. It's like, what, what a concept that is coming forth, you know, from this. And, and so, really, Really, he is seeing in, um, in a higher way, a way of possibilities, if you would. So on our world tour, and we're visiting Italy with its passion and its excitement and its food and its culture, um, that creativity has come from a higher place. And if we could just learn to see as God sees, not as what's being fed to us. So my first point is seeing as God sees. So, you know, pull out your passport. And here I got point one. Remember, I worked ahead enough to at least give you a spot to write it. But what I want us to get is to be able to see as God sees. Because um, as we begin to catch something larger than where we were, um, new expression can come around. And Michelangelo, he, you know, he's a guy who was laying on his back, painted a Sistine Chapel for a while, um, and did a few carvings in the process. Um, he said, one of the great dangers is not that we dream too big and we miss. It's that we dream too small and we reach it. Yeah. You know, it's not, the problem is not dreaming big. You know, it, it's that we say, well, I think I can do this. You know, I, I, you know, this is possible from what I know. But we forget to see as God sees. And I love this little cartoon quip here. Uh, it says, I'm wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. Unfortunately, my dreams were never very wild. <laughs> Let that not happen to us, guys, because as you take a look at those masterful manifestors, what they do is they get a big dream. And the thing about big dreams is they attract big players. They attract big people. You know, God, eh, I'm just trying to make the rent. <laughs> yeah, how exciting is that? But I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is uh, bring electricity to every home on this planet. Like Buckminster Fuller said, man, people line up and say, yeah, let, let's make that possible. As individuals who think big, like a Bill Gates who said, you know what, we're going to put a computer in every house and have it connected to the internet. <laughs> yeah, right, uh-huh, that's beyond a stretch. It, it's happening. Martin Luther King said, you know what, no more in my country, I, I dream of a country w without prejudice, you know, without racism. And was willing to take a stand for that. And the people that would march beside him, Kennedy said, you know, we're going to put a person on the moon and bring them back safe. I mean, as you begin to dream big, and it's not based upon um, on the past. Ernest Holmes talks about, you know, don't base uh, your future on precedent, on what went before us. Let us begin to see the future from the future. 
You know, it's a God thing. Let's see as God sees, not from what has been, but what is possible. And recognize that there is a way from where I am to the vision that I have been given. If I choose to see as God sees, then what begins to surface is everything that doesn't support that and everything that does. And I get to work with that. Get to work with that. This is where I'm going. You know, as Terry was sharing with us, it's not, I want this, I want this, because what happens is you're going to keep wanting it, because what you keep saying is, I want it, which is just affirming and declaring, I don't have it. It's a God thing, seeing as God sees, is seeing yourself there now. I'm perfect, I'm whole, I'm complete now. I'm living a life of freedom. I want for you, this is my want, so what I see for you, see how I switch that? That's all I'm asking you to do. What I see for you is a life of uh, living prosperously, which is about freedom and health and joy, self-expression, creativity and ease and a grace, living beyond the wants and living in that wonderful Garden of Eden. There was a, a gentleman out of Hollywood, always enjoyed this story, Steve Cantell. Um, he actually died a, a few years ago, but he was born only in 1941. But... He was not, some would say, the sharpest tool in the shed. He failed first grade, failed fourth grade, failed 10th grade, you know, and his mom would help him study for tests. They'd spend five hours prepping for this test, and he'd fail it. He'd ask someone who got an A, how long did you study? They said, I didn't study. And it's just, ugh. But rather than focusing on that which was not his gift, you know, He chose to put his energy and his focus on what was his to do. And that was football at the time. And he played football and he played it well. He excelled at it. He ended up inner scholar um, honors in uh, in football as a running back. And what he took from the field into his work life is that I can excel at what it is I love. Remember that title of that book? You know, do what you love and the money will follow. We're talking about the Today, happiness, you know, attracts prosperity. If you are doing what you love, that is, becomes the attracting factor that it creates. You want to be happy first. Well, I'll be happy when I get it. No, you got to be happy first. No, I'll be happy when I get it. Well, hey, you'll stick with the wants over there, and we'll live in joy, happiness, prosperity, and prosperous living. So anyway, uh, you, you may know Steve uh, Cantel, but he went on um, to, of all things, be a script writer. And they started liking his scripts. It went so well that he started his own production company. Steve Cantell Productions went on to write for 38 different TV shows, produced over 350 scripts. They not only created and wrote, they produced the shows. And at the height of his studio, he had over 2,000 people on payroll. Pretty good for a guy who couldn't get out of first grade or fourth grade or 10th grade. But you know what? He began to not live in the wants. Oh, I want this. This is what I love. I'm going to see as God sees this infinite possibility. And what's amazing is after he sold the studio, he went on to write 11 best-selling novels. When the teachers are saying, man, you're a failure, kid. You just don't have it. But you know, that's part of this thing called life. You can sit there and blame, but blame doesn't, you know, lift your uh, self-worth very good. You know, it's, we talked about that last week. I mean, it's like, you know, you just got to take responsibility because I'm in a new environment. I get to choose how I'm going to be with myself and how I'm going to express it in, in the world and realize what comes in my world is part of my journey. Uh, remember uh, Andy Rooney? I don't know if he's even still alive anymore. No? Okay. Bless his soul. Um, no, that's the Pope's job. Um, I am so sorry, Andy. Um, Anyway, he said, most people want to live on top of the mountain, but the happiness and the growth occurs in the climb. It's in the climb. I I can just remember the fun it was to create this place, you know, and, and, and what it was like to risk going after this with, with nothing in the bank, but we had a vision of a, a thriving spiritual community where our children are given these spiritual principles, a campus where people could come and feel the presence of God, that they could show up on a Sunday and feel that life and that love, that prayer requests were answered, that it was a healing center, is a place of dissemination of spiritual tools that are applicable in our daily life. It is a spot where we are rem- invited to think of ways in which we can take spirit into the world, and this is a vision that begins 
began to unfold with the growth and the stretch and people committing their life to it. I mean, there since Linda, after more than 20 years being here, giving her life day after day, loving this place. You know, the holder sitting right there who's, you know, they're there in the courtroom, courtroom saying, yes, we can do this, and saw us through. And, and the, the rankers, you know, who, who helped fund it, and the architect who helped build the place. I mean, how we possibly could have done that, I don't know, but I can assure you it was creative, it was scary, it was fun, it was dynamic, it was alive. It was a happening kind of time, and we were invited to see as God sees, be courageous enough to go for it. This is going to be dynamic. This is going to be love. This is going to be God in action, showing up in my life. Count me in, Spirit, because I'm good to go here. I'm not quite sure, but what I'm going to have come out of me is uh, honoring those people I'm playing with. You know, I'm going to be as kind as I can be to those around me, and I am going to move forward because there's something inside that is putting me on this path, and the great spiritual leaders, um, gosh, I, I forgot his quote that was supposed to start this whole talk off. <laughs> it was a good one. You should have heard it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I, uh, I'll give you another one of his. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it now, but th I'll, I'll do this other one. Um, this one's at the front of the book. The other one was in the back of the book. And it, it was about seeing from that God place. And uh, so I, I really didn't make that up. But this one I, I like because um, first service I manifested glasses that I didn't have. <laughs> now, all for that instant manifestation. But anyway, so uh, this one is, I'm going to tell you a story first. I, I don't know, I'm just all over the But I, it, it just keeps coming to me because, you know, I get so carried away with going and create that I sometimes forget to slow down. And a story um, that I, I read Mark Nepo's book, o Awakening, um, was about the, uh, the migration of the caribou that, uh, you know, walked around the scalp of this planet, if you would. In the spring, uh, they head north for their mass migration of 200,000 heads. of. And what's interesting is there's something inside of them that calls them on this migration. But the funny part, it's not funny, but the part here that's interesting is the coyotes know that. You know, the packs of wolves know that. And they kind of hang out on the migration trail and just pick off lunch and dinner and breakfast as the herds go by. Now, my thinking mind would say, you know what? If I was a caribou, I'm just taking a different path this year. But you know what? For millennia, these animals listened to this innate nature that was inside of them that said, we're not going to hide here, but rather we're going to choose living instead. You know, I, I'm not going to be an observer and, and, and watch those go first, but rather I'm going to be a participant in life. I'm going to be this caribou that is honoring this something inside of myself. I'm not going to overthink it and deny myself and hide out on the side and let others get even. I'm going to thrive, not survive. I'm going to go for what is inside my nature. And with that, the indigenous people talk about that migration is what keeps the planet spinning on its axis all year long. Is that true or not? But isn't that beautiful? And isn't spirit and seeing as God sees a little bit more about beauty and feeling and sense? There's an Eskimo proverb about Maybe they're just not stars. You know, maybe they're holes in heaven where our loved ones are looking down upon us and shining and sending their love our way to let us know that they're happy. You know? It's like, rather, maybe they're not stars, but holes in heaven in which the love of our loved ones that have passed letting us know they're happy it's okay like who comes up with this stuff <laughs> well not someone whose head's all filled and doesn't have room but it, his pope his holiness francis he writes in this book the frantic pace of modern life seems to steal away all the hope and the joy from our daily lives the pressures and the powerlessness we experience in so many situations seem to shrivel our souls 
The countless challenges we face stupefy us. They paralyze us. The world is speeding up to build, in theory, a better society. Yet paradoxically, at the end of the day, there is no time for anything or anyone. We have no time to spend with our families, our communities, or time for our friendships, for the consensus or consensus building, or for reflection. We should ask ourselves, how can we enact the joy of the gospel in our daily lives, in our cities? What is it we can do? Slow down. Second point, <laughs> write it up. You know, there has to be space for these ancestral stories to find resonance inside of our being. You know, the wisdom traditions of the ages all seem to have space for meditation, prayer, and contemplation so we can find our center, so we can return to that unified breath or pulse or rhythm of life. All the great traditions are telling us to slow down and multitasking doesn't support that. You've got to get off your screens. Whether it's in your hand or on your desk or in your lap, you've got to create that space. If you want to see as God sees, so you can be doing you know, that natural thing that moves the caribou, that natural thing that moves you, you've got to begin to see something greater as possible and know that this will bring me happiness if I commit myself to this. And maybe I'm climbing the mountain, it's going to take some work, but you know what? I I'm going for it because that's where the joy, the happiness, the learning begin to evolve emerge and happen and I'm going for that because I'm seeing the spirit sees and I'm going to be quiet enough to, to listen when things arise on this path that don't seem congruent with what it is I'm to do and as I begin to listen and I begin to be I begin to get lessons like the ancestors or the indigenous people from anywhere and anything. I was driving uh, last year up, up the California coast line, the Oregon coast line, you know, and on the, whether it be the left side, the west side is the ocean, on the right side or the east side are the mountains. And we cut, you know, we cut this road right down the middle of all this. You know, before us, you know, humans were here, you know, they're was not a road to the extent we've got. We created this. And as I'm moving on this road for days, I'm getting lulled into recognizing how the weather that comes off the ocean just pounds the cliffs and the mountains and, and it shapes them. And, uh, and I recognize, but that's all part of it, to be worn away, to show your inner beauty. And what I come to recognize, what's going on out there is going on on the inside because as we go down the center, you have got these things in life that blow. And then you have got this wearing down, but just because you are being worn down doesn't mean you can't keep going. Just because you have been worn down means you have failed. All it means is that you're beginning to have revealed more of what is below the surface as you continue to move forth in life. But you've got to have space and slow down and be quiet enough in a busy mind to be able to hear spirit speak, to see as spirit sees, and to know as the divine knows, and to recognize that when things happen in our life, they're there to assist us. Debbie Ford, um, a wonderful friend of Seaside and authoress for, for years until she passed, uh, she wrote the book, uh, The Dark Side of the Light Changers. Great title. Even the light folks have a dark side. But anyway, she wrote um, that whatever is unfolding is part of your evolution and growth. Whatever is unfolding and happening is part of your evolution and growth. Doesn't mean that's good or it's bad. It just means it is part of your evolution and growth. Ernest Holmes would tell us whatever's going on is the answer to your prayers, if you've been praying. You know? You know, and so if you can take your judgment off of it and begin to recognize Gene Houston, who you know is coming to Seaside, right? There's only a few of you who know. I hope there's more of you that have bought tickets that know <laughs> that she's on her way. But, but anyway, I mean, just fabulous. Um, and she wrote in Oprah's book uh, that we've been working on. Are you, have you been enjoying the sacred circles? Yes, yes two of you, good. <laughs> Actually, I know there's about 60 or 70 people that are doing the sacred circles. Sign up if you're not in one. You're more than welcome to take this Sunday lesson to a deeper level experience. Um, 
the path, your path made clear. But Jean Houston, you know, Oprah interviewed these uh, individuals, and Jean Houston is one of her favorites that she brings back to her show. And in the interview, Jean said right here, I believe that we are here with a deep purpose to become all that we can be. The caribou, there's something moving me. It doesn't make sense. They're going to... I believe that we're headed ultimately in the right direction. I believe that we have been given sufficient stress, oh, thanks a lot, crisis and complexity and consciousness to do the things that are just beyond our imagination, larger than our aspiration, more complex than all of our dreams. I believe in love. I believe in you. I believe in me. I believe in this and most potent moment in history this is what I believe in, that this is the most potent moment in history. Mary Ann Williamson the other night shared with us that, you know, all the times in history have had their challenge, not all the times, but there's times in history that have been extreme challenges and we have always risen. So whether it's happening in the city or in the country, take a look at your life too. Macrocosm, microcosm is what Ernest Holmes talks about. As above, so below. What's out picturing, it begins on the inside. I'm driving down a highway and I'm thinking I'm a mixture between the ocean and the mountains. Give me a break. What does that mean? But you know, all of a sudden, if you can begin to allow yourself to be available to the lessons and the insight to help you evolve and to help you grow, whether it's crisis, whether it's complexity, whether it's ease, whether it's grace, it is all part of the answer to your prayer. And I got to begin to see as God sees because there's something beyond my imagination, something beyond my thinking. You know, those caribou believe in being more than thinking their way through it. I've got to choose to be in whatever situation I find myself in. I've got to slow down enough to be able to see as God sees so I know what is mine to do next in my life. It is about it being that simple. You know, Confucius said um, that life is simple. It's just we who insist to make it complicated. Why are we insisting to make it complicated? Why can't I just live with a sense of trust and faith in the divine unfoldment as opposed to needing to stir the pot? Say, man, it, it's, it's tougher than you think. Let me convince you why it's all falling apart here. You know, what's that for? How about instead of living in the wants, oh, I begin to see from that God place, from that future place, from that place of knowing that the greater good is emerging right here. We're on our perfect path or our pure path is what the totality of the, the book is all about. And we're listening to that call that, that, um, that uh, Buckminster Fuller listened to, to Martin Luther King listened to, uh, um, a, a Gates listened to, the caribou listened. It, it is part of nature seeking to express itself in this world. And if we can choose to get out out of a mind that needs to quantify it, explain it, and begin to live in a greater trust of revelation presenting its way, we begin to know in a deeper sense that I'm not in this alone, but the presence of God is there, and I can live with a sense of happiness because happiness attracts prosperous living. If I'm not living in happiness, then I'm telling you, you're not in prosperous living. You can have a surplus of cash, but if you're not in happiness, that is not prosperous living. I believe that happiness is a key component of prosperous living. You know, the Pope believes in uh, the compassion and the joy and the kind way of being. Um, sounds like a happy way of being. And with that comes prosperous living. You know, it, it's um, plenty of people have found happiness, but they haven't experienced because they were too busy. Now, think about that. There's plenty of people I mean, that are out there looking for happiness and have found it, but they've just been too busy to experience the happiness because you know what? Well, my head's going. There's something else I got to do and all that. Slow down. Be present. Because always happiness, when it's in the palm, it, it, it seems small until it's gone. And then it's big. And it's precious. You wonder why did I let go? And so I know right now that the blessings and the gift of that tenderness and expression of God is our natural state. It is. Rumi said, let what you love be what you do. You know the book title, you know, do what you love and money will follow. Well, Rumi, hundreds of years before, said, let what you love be what you do. He didn't say, this is how you got to figure out how to pay for it. 
do what you love. Seaside has been committed to being that beacon. And how we have been able to pay our way through time is mind-boggling. <laughs> but we have stayed true to the purpose and the mission of this community, inspiring people to live their divinity, that somehow things have come together to carry us this far, and there's not a inch of doubt in my being that it will continue to do that into the future because this place is about healing it is about love it is about caring it is kindness it is compassion it is about supporting our children it is a place where you can come when you're hurting it's a place you can come when you're in a, in a sense of joy it is a place you can deepen you, you've heard me say this but it's what we have spoken before this place ever manifested because that is what called me here with something in consciousness that has called all of us to support and to attract wonderful musicians you know to attract great teachers and speakers and presidential candidates, if you would. There is something magnificent about this community, and we are here because of your love and your commitment to honoring the presence of God in your life at Seaside. And as we go forward into this uh, you know, pledge time, we can say, hey guys, what, what's your intention for next year? You know, We're not asking that yet, but I, I want you to know that it is magnificent what is going on here, and it's important. Uh, at least this is what Gandhi said, is that happiness is when your words and your thoughts and your actions are in harmony. I've heard a lot of people espouse spiritual platitudes, but that's not really what's going on inside them. My prayer is that we are able to live in harmony and be congruent with what our heart desires and allow our thoughts to be filled, our words to be spoken, and our actions to reflect that something that stirs in our soul, in our consciousness, in our awareness, that something that comes from a deep place that I only get clear about when I join the wisdom traditions of the ages that have slowed down and remind us Come back to that center where you move with the pulse of life itself. That you're able to step forth with a knowingness like the caribou that is greater than courage. But there's something inside that tells them where to go. And they say yes. I know there's something inside of all of us that's inviting us to take hold of that vision. So we have that star that is guiding us when we come to realize it's the love of our loved ones calling us forward. Create your future from your future. I love you. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Keith Leon back to our stage. of foundations class. I took that class uh, 30 years ago and this was the gift that I received from that course. Not the buzzing guitar, but the song that'll happen <laughs> as soon as that settles in. And the chorus of the song was the answer to the question that I was sitting in was if Jesus was sitting in front of me right now, what would he say? I'll just not move. <laughs> there was a time
That is Keith Leon. All right. Man, God is here. What a great message. That, that could work. No matter where you go, kind of omnipresent kind of thing, you know? So anyway, hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to share our gift and um, the opportunity to take it from our heart, to allow our actions to represent our, our spirit, the, the congruency between our actions and our heart and our soul and our spirit. And as we give, it comes back. But it's not why we do it. it. It's rather an extension of our consciousness. It is the activity that spirit is having in our life. And as we continually support spirit's work, what we find is spirit supporting its work is our life. You know, there's a sense of happiness that comes to know your source is truly inexhaustible and is ever present and somehow have made it through, uh, through time being supported and will continue to be. And that as I begin to expand what is possible, you'll find greater support and greater people and greater love and just ex- continuing to show up for you. But you gotta, gotta allow spirit to be a partnership with you on a regular basis. And so I want to invite our ushers to come forward at this time as we do take our gifts from our heart. Um, I want to say thank you to those who mail in your contribution and those who participate in the auto tie, that regular systematic support from your world uh, and the seasides, that, that uh, regular um, Participation is a big blessing to us, I I assure you. And so I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that this truly is a blessed moment where the fullness of the divine is having its way in our actions, that truly there is a congruency between the heart's desire to support spirit's work and our activity. And it feels good that happiness and that joy continue to radiate out with this gift that has been given because we are that tap, that avenue, that conduit, that channel through which the infinite pours into form. And I know right now that it continues to enrich everything that moves uh, in our life as we allow that movement of spirit. So I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the recognition, the realization of that, that source and for being able to see clearly the actions that support my level of understanding. So with joy I give, with joy I receive, and with joy I live in this loving space of ever-expanding good that comes from the inside out. And so it is. Amen. Together, let us say this affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now.
Guys from Seaside. Best San Diego Sunday morning music around, for sure. Hey, as I stand before this bounty, I can feel the outpouring, the love, the caring, the compassion. Really, that sense that it's coming from a, a happiness vibration. That happiness attracts prosperous living. For the giver is blessed by the gift that they have given. It is multiplied, it is pressed down, and is running over to the point where the barn doors are open, for, pouring forth blessings until he's say, well, God, that's enough. Truly, that is the result of the gift that has been given today. And I know right now that this gift that has been given in love and is received in love, it is handled in good stewardship, is being put back into the flow in life, keeping that rippling, abundant effect, blessing everyone that comes in contact. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this moment of pause to participate in God's expression of good. And so it is. Amen. Hey, this is Josh Franklin, your board vice chair, president. Uh, just wonderful support at Seaside in so many ways. Just thank you for all that you do for us. It's a great gift. Keith Leon, thank you so much for your wonderful music. Congratulations on your world book tour. I know you got Canada and Mexico and Europe waiting for you after your stop here. And we just feel blessed that it coordinated for you to come back home because we remember you earlier this year doing our, our wonderful um, New Thought-a-thon. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, Rebecca, know your concert today just rocks the house at a Thornton Winery. And uh, you bless us. You rock us every Sunday. It's a gift. Audra, thank you for your wonderful gift and leading us into the morning. Appreciate that. Thank you to the sound booth. We have got right there Matthew on the sound. We have got Marv giving us the visuals and this wonderful video stream and team. We just appreciate you and love you. And there's a whole group in our editing booth inside. Oh, there they are inside making sure we're casting this to the world. We've got chat rooms going on and we know that you're there. We have a wonderful online regular congregation, if you would, a virtual community that chats. You know, we're not really allowed to talk too much in here when I'm talking because I don't like like that, but they're talking all through my talk. Now, now those chat rooms, it's like Christian said, what? You know, and, and we always have a practitioner facilitating it, so there's great good going on. So also great good going on today. I want you to know that next Sunday is New Member Sunday. If you've been thinking of joining Seaside, this is the time to say yes to that greater good. And after service day, there is this wonderful new member class. I'd love to share with you all about Seaside and some of the history and the answer all the questions you have about membership. And next Sunday, we're going to have you stand up, share, hey, this is my name. I feel good to be part of this family. And uh, then we're taking you all out to lunch afterwards. Also today, um, wonderful things about Seaside is we work hard to take our love and hands off the campus. And Humble Designs is one of the things, and it's happening today. You probably saw the big moving truck in the parking lot. Kathy Hearn is championing this outreach. And, um, you know, what we're doing is helping to furnish, you know, new housing for uh, those that had not had a roof over their head previously. It's a beautiful thing. If you ever want to see Kathy Hearn like in grubbies, go check her out today. She, she's out by the truck. I got to show you, her grubbies aren't too grubby, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's close to her genes anyway. And um, also the humble, um, we got this harvest, harmony harvest. And you know, people have been harvesting the stuff from their gardens at home. And because, you know, we probably have too much. I know we do and our neighbors do. And we put it outside and people throw in, uh, I don't know, a few bucks. And all the proceeds it goes to our youth program. So that, you know, that's going on today. Um, so also your postcards, you got that, right? So have fun sending it to someone. But as uh, Audra shared with you earlier, you know, tear off the bottom half. And we have back by the sound booth a wonderful basket that is starting to be filled up with wonderful testimonials. You know, we want to hear about your demonstration that, that's going on. So, so um, do that. And, and ah, send me a postcard, too. I think you're in Italy. That's pretty cool. Nice job. Hey, guys, anybody want to share anything with me? Yes. Um, like, so we went outside and uh, these uh, cups were filled with dirt and we put uh, these uh, flower seeds inside and they're gonna, they might grow into roses uh, or... Uh, Beautiful flowers. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is good. Yours are daisy. We'll hear it in a second. Um, said us this words and then we said what came to our mind when she said those words. Uh-huh. Nice. And so you planted seeds of possibilities. Uh, Anything? I have a um, 11. 
It is a very round lemon, and it is not ripe. Oh, okay. <laughs> you bring it back for our next uh, harvest harm. Hey, Kristen, how are we doing with uh, giving you some volunteer hours? Good. Good? All right. We would love for you to come play with our children. It is a great gift you give yourself. What's that? Okay. No. Today we went outside. We planted flowers, um, and on at sir, uh, on the carpet, we she she said, "What like what does change mean to you? What does happiness?" mean to you and what does growth mean to you and then somebody else said um what does um uh those are deep spiritual questions yeah and then i said, <laughs> then I said uh, nurture um happiness uh nice do you want to be a minister someday <laughs> yeah that spirit is moving through you Hey, let's say together to our children our affirmations. We see you, we love you, and we support you in your magnificent. You know what I see sitting here um, this morning is uh, Jean Houston's personal assistant for when she comes to town in a couple of weeks. Um, Linda, you want to come up and maybe share a little bit about Jean? Everybody has these flyers in your program. If you would take this and put it in uh, somewhere this week, your coffee shop, uh, your breakfast cafe, somewhere that we want to fill this place. So, Morning, Seaside. Morning. Hello. You have the opportunity in two weeks to be in the presence of one of the most extraordinary people on the planet. Dr. Christian Menson mentioned Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller called Jean Houston's mind one of the greatest wonders of the world. Wow. And Jean rarely comes out and teaches. Most of her teaching is online now. And so because she loves Dr. Christian and she loves Seaside, she's coming back again here it's a very rare opportunity. So I hope you will come. Being in her presence is different than reading her books. You can get a lot of knowledge from her books. When you're in your presence, there is a transmission. She is an igniter and an activator of souls and hearts and minds, just like Dr. Christian is. And if you think, oh, I'll just come Friday night and just get a little taste, I really want to invite you to come for the whole weekend. Friday night is just like the little appetizer. The real meal is the whole weekend, and if you really want to feel that sense of activation and igniting in your heart and your soul, Jean wants more for us than we want for ourselves. And she has a very certain affinity with science of mind and centers of spiritual living. In fact, she wrote the introduction to the most recent science of mind textbook. So a real treasure, please come out, clear your calendar. Live streamers, it's not too late to book a plane ticket to come down to Seaside, and I hope to see you here. All right. Woo. And Linda Watson, she's one of our um, uh, emeritus practitioners, so, which means she's been around doing this for a long time. So um, how, hopefully we recorded that. We're going to play that. What you just said about Jean all over. So anyway, tell your friends it's going to be a special night and weekend. Um, so, but right now it's very special. I'm going to pray. I am praying. I'm in that consciousness. This whole morning moves to this moment. All of it leads to right now. For this journey that we have been on has been the joy. But I got to tell you what, it's, it's the wonderful resonant field that comes when we are able to slow down and become that receptive space for the divine download. For that infinite intelligence that guides the universe is the same wisdom that is moving within the heart and the soul of this community right here. For the blessings and grace of the divine is upon this moment that we have become conscious of. And it's in this greater realization that there is this unifying resonance that aligns each and every one of us with that greater yet to be. And we begin to see a spirit sees in a new kind of way as we look upon our life, recognizing what has unfolded heretofore has been part of my path. Without judgment, it has been part of what I have been engaged with. But what I know right now is that which lies before me, I see from that mountaintop view. I begin to see as God sees and has space for the divine download, trusting that which is next for me to do. 
than any spots that I have been worn down. I know that it is not the end, but rather it is just revealing of that deeper expression of self and that I find the strength, the courage, and the conviction to step forth to honor that which the Spirit is speaking into this conscious realization. For wholeness is the natural state of spirit. And I know right now that is the true natural state of each and every one of us. So if there is anyone here today that may be experiencing anything less than the wholeness of being, whether it is in the physical temple, which is the body of God, or whether it is in the experiential world or the emotional world, I know right now that those are the experiences that have captivated that moment. But what is activated in this very moment is a new harmonic tone that anything that does not match falls away without battle, without fight. But what remains is that clear path, that one that innately calls each and every one of us on our forward journey, being that which we have called to be without overthinking, choosing to live rather than hide, choosing to thrive rather than survive. For truly there is a responsiveness to this moment, for this moment is filled with happiness, and happiness attracts a prosperous living. A happiness attracts the, the prosperous download. The wealth of the infinite is our experience, for we are part of that. We are part of the divine. We're not all of it, but all that we are is, is of a spirit, and that is wealth, that is wholeness, that is a, a, an opportunity to be balanced in the decisions and the choices that we make. They come from love. They come from a higher place. And with that comes the strength to follow through. With that comes a deep knowingness of not second guessing, but rather a, a seeing. I'm grateful that Seaside is a growing, thriving spiritual community that has been a dynamic expression of God for more than 30 years, that in this wonderful prosperity season, that every member of this community is beginning to discover more of the wealth of their being, the abundance of being, the prosperity of being, and that prosperous living is the natural state that is without struggle. It comes from seeing that higher call of expression, and everything lines up. So letting go of judgment as to how it is supposed to line up, but trusting this moment for the perfect healing to have its way in the appropriate ways in our individual lives, I am grateful. I'm thankful that the prayer requests that have been brought forth are true, are so, are manifesting. I'm grateful for all the demonstrations that have been put in this basket of manifestation and feeling this rising tide that every member of this community is blessed by this evolving consciousness. Grateful that Seaside continues to grow, it continues to thrive, continues to prosper, continues to do Spirit's work, it continues to be a beacon of light, to bring a consciousness of love and peace, not only to our nation, but to our world. And as we go on this global journey in consciousness and visit these other wonderful spiritual leaders of our time, we are enriched to recognize that these are universal spiritual truths that are shared. So grateful to see as God sees and to slow down enough to be able to see, experience, and feel that love. I say thank you. Thank you that the words we shared are the truth that is manifesting here and now. And I let go and allow spirit to have its way. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all.
says, I am now living in happiness. Together, I am now living in happiness. Touch your heart and say it again. I am now living in happiness. Again, I am now living in happiness. One more time, like it's your truth. I am now living in happiness. And our song of grace. Bring a friend, go to class.